Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and today we are doing the Crop Watch 2022 Go around and look at all the crops with Father Phil and yeah, we're going to see how everything is done and as is the title suggests um, we're going to go through how our fertilizer has changed this year as we've spread two thirds, we've only spread a third of the fertilizer we spread last year so we're starting off with our covered maize so this is it at the minute so it's actually quite a bit of dirt in it. Is that all the way through it or? Yeah, it's in the road. When it was sowed and the, yeah. the spray didn't go into it. Yeah, it did not affect the mail. No, it hasn't, but yeah, it's it's dirtier than last year anyways. Uh, Ch chickweed and yeah. that's lamb's quarter, isn't it? Which? That's yeah. lamb's quarter. Yeah. So what are we looking at? Two cobs. Per plant is tasseled out. This crop, as you would remember, um, we sowed it in conjunction with gold crop and we sowed, what was it? Feedy top and foxtrot. Foxtrot, this is the foxtrot. Was a foxtrot? This? Oh yeah, foxtrot is this end and feedy top is at the other end. So now this crop, while the video is kind of about the fertilizer usage, this crop got everything it needed. If we soil tested the uh, ground with gold crop, they gave us a recommended amount of nitrogen and all the different ingredients. Which so was reduced a bit. Yeah, so it got exactly what it needed and you can see it in the crop. Great crop. It's a great crop of maize. Great crop of maize. Uh, but when we get to the uncovered crop, you, you'll see what the, the difference is. But um, yeah, so that's the maize. The plant covered crop. So. Expected harvest date, middle of October. Middle of October. 20th of October, towards the end of October. So, maybe earlier. All depends on what, how it comes now. Anyways, that's the first crop of maize. So now here we are with our crop of sugar beet, which is going for fodder. It's not going for sugar, it's going for fodder, but it is a variety of sugar beet. Again, it's a, con what is it? Concevo Smart. Marking. Beet that we sowed in conjunction with gold crop and what's your thoughts on the crop? Best crop ever. Yeah. I'd say without a doubt the best crop ever. Absolutely superb weed control. Yeah. Now that's the road I got driven on. Yeah. But well, we just go up to the side the far side of it and talk about As you can see weed control, one spray. And there's nothing. Well, the, 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 the easiest beet. Uh, easiest beet I ever grew. Yeah. Uh, a serious germination. Unbelievable germination. The tallest germination would be very good on it and to space it out well. So we've got it at the furthest space than we could do on the old cedar. And as you can see, there's there's, there's hardly a miss in it. Now. Yeah. Here is, there is a miss. There, there's, there's a bit here, but that's kind of because, oh, bell come off. Bell come off. Um, but once you, 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 like, you look across down the road there, it is shocking, shocking. There was a serious germination in beet. There's a good growth there coming on underneath it. Good butt. There's yeah. a good butt, there's a good healthy leaf. So we'll be pulling this with the single row armor salmon. Yeah, we may start it at towards the very end of September because the bottom side of this field would be a little bit wettish. So get that pulls at the start. Get that there and uh, we'll only pull it as we kind of need it up till November and then just finish it off. Finish off. it off, yeah. Um, it's, it's a huge crop. Uh, tonnage wise, I'm wondering how it'll do as a sugar beet, it wouldn't be a big tonnage. It wouldn't have the fresh weight. No, not, not to compare it to the fodder beet, but then it's sugar beet, it's harder. It's, it's, it's higher dry matter, higher dry it's dry more matter. feeding per kilo. It has been sprayed a couple of times with Evergreen 1866. B, B, B Evergreen 1866, which is a, a, a spray on fertilizer. Seems to have responded really well to that because it's a really, really oily, mm. healthy leaf. Yeah. Like I had your grandfather looking at it here yesterday evening and then he thought he'd never seen a crop of beet like it. Yeah. Um, and there's a great, there's a great like full leaf structure to the plant, so it should be yeah. very easy pulled. Yeah, no, it should be good. I don't know how how clean the root will be when it's pulled. Yeah, sure we'll have to wait and see. Um, it got bore on it. Got it, it, it got, it got heavier than it needed when it needed it. Yeah, that was the big thing this year. We got it on them when they needed them. I'm very proud of that field of beet. Yeah, no, it is a serious serious crop of beet that. And it's as your grandfather pointed out, and you just pointed out, for this is only this. First week in August. Yeah, there's a serious, there's a serious little butt of beet coming on it. Coming on it, which normally in beet never would really start to butt up till maybe September October yeah. time. So we'll have to wait and see. I'll be expecting a good 
fresh way to turn off it, man. Yeah. But like you're you're that happy with this as people probably already know from the son of the the father rip, you're planning on putting six acres in for oh next yeah, year. We're increasing it to six acres for next year because um it's the just, sea is great feeding, it's great feeding for cattle. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's and this this it's is what the land. This has worked very well so it, it has. It has, yeah, because uh, down through the years beet growing conventional crops of beet with the sprays, you have to be mixing three different types of spray. Um Sometimes, if you got your timing wrong, yeah, it was brutal. I can show you how effective the spray is because there's one little strip down there that was missed. Well, we can show how getting your sprays on in time is a big thing with the pumpkins. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. that was. That I, was. I said to wait, and you said they had to sow. Well, we had to sow. We couldn't leave them in the pots any longer, but we'll show you that next. So here's our crop of potatoes. The bit of wild oats in it, but it is very clean uh, and it's looking very good. Um, all sprays were gone on in time, blight and everything, so yeah, there's no... There's one more spray for blight now, and that's probably them finished. Yeah. Um, yeah as you see, your say. pumpkins is tipping away there, and yeah. then that's, um, that side of the road is my tillage operation, then this side of the road is and your tillage. There is pumpkins in here. We, Somewhere. No, they are there. You, yeah, sure. We walked through it there today, and there is pumpkins in it. But as you can see, it's a bit of a wilderness. And the reason for that well, is... It's wild and pumpkin, is it? No. The reason for this being, now the other field isn't as bad because we actually got that sprayed in a bit more time but the issue that we had with this this year was last year we sowed the pumpkins in our old greenhouse they were ready in June or July it was oh, when, June, we, June. when we started planting them out all was good This year we this got, year, the new greenhouse. We got the new greenhouse off organic garden and we planted them in it and because it's a new greenhouse it was very warm there was no hole efficient very very efficient we planted them at the same time and the pumpkins just jumped out of the pot absolutely run ahead on us and it meant that we were a month early we started planting out in may the reason that so there's so many weeds is we hadn't the ground prepared in time and what we've done last year was we prepared the ground we got the flush of weeds to come up and we sprayed them off and the ground stayed nearly perfectly clean for the rest of the year this year we got it tilled in time we got a couple of weeds to come up we sprayed it we didn't get all the weeds that wasn't sprayed at all and that was yeah that wasn't sprayed but the other field was it's not too bad but it still we didn't get enough of a flush of weeds before spraying because it ended up that we needed to get pumpkins out because they were going pop bound it was it was in dire straits they delay the pumpkin set next, yeah. next year by at least three weeks and we got them out and because they went out in may we had slightly colder weather colder nights and it just did pumpkins not did not like did it. not do very well but they have come to oh, there's, pumpkins there. there's, pum there's pumpkins in it you can see one of the lucky things with the pumpkins is they have this broad leaf so compared to conventional crops them broad leaves they come up they'll take over space and you'll actually have some like there's a pumpkin there coming it's just it's I, I just so pissed off with the weeds but the thing is we don't know how many pumpkins we have it's very hard to have any idea with the way it ended up going I might call it a lucky dip. Yeah, it's or nearly organic gardening, you could call it. It's, it, yeah, it's uh, just we're shocked and annoyed with how it, it, that turned out. But just saying that on the pumpkins, we're going to be putting up the tickets like we done last year for the first week of September. The pre order will be putting up the same amount as last year, even though we have much more pumpkins set. And our plan is then once we harvest them the week before the pumpkin patch, once we know how many pumpkins we have, then we'll update it with extra spaces and slots. But yeah. You should be getting a grant for growing that now. But oats. For next year. You have every weed possible under the sun. Yeah. But Wild oats, ordinary oats, barley, everything. For next year, the thing is to sow a month later and try and get the ground prepared a bit earlier so we can get it sprayed off before yeah, we, we plant. They had another chemical that may be better for to do it. Yeah, so it, it's just annoying, but it's one of them things. It's our second year at it and you always make mistakes. So Learn it. Every day is a school. Yeah, every day is a school. Day. Every year you learn something different. And then there's a lot of cabbages and broccoli. There's broccoli there and Brussels sprouts, but yeah. Anyways, we'll move on to the oats and the barley the other side of the road. So we're out here now with our first crop of spring barley. Now this is broadcast spread, so shook with the spreader, hard it in. So it is quite thick. We do have a couple of patches have gone down or a bit tossed a bit here, bad. there and yonder, but not much like that, not as bad as last year. Look no. at the pump grain. 
smashing full plump grain in it. And uh, it re really is starting to turn now. It's starting to really ripen in at the minute. It's nearly gone past the whole cropping stage. Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. Two weeks uh, spray off. Yeah, I'd be looking at it very, very hard now in uh, 10 days to a fortnight. Just to spray, spray off, off to, to kill weeks, it, to, so to dry it. First week in September. Yeah. That's a, a real healthy crop. Fierce clean crop and fierce clean underneath. Would that get pre-emergence to that? No. No, that was no, sprayed no. after the post-emergence. 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 Uh, you look there, all you can see is heads of grain. Yeah. We do have a bit of crow damage back next to Jeep. We'll just show you that when we get back down, show you what the crows can do to a crop. Back next to the gate. It's not as heavy here because of compaction inside the gate. But you can see what the crows have done. You can see the area they've cleared. So but the, they're easy stopped. Yeah, the, literally them pigtails and the little bags seem to have stopped them. Stopped them, yeah. Stopped them in their tracks. Yeah, and they, they never did bothered the winter crops, no. but they've started into the spring crops now. And we actually later on we'll have to move a banger or do a bit more of this prevention to keep the crows away. It's a bit of a problem at the minute. So just something Father Phil's Warmer. pointing out. You can see that line of heavier barley there, and that is in, in line with a shore that goes across the corner of the field. You can see it there. You can see just how, how much thicker and heavier it is. Just walking now into the oats. I saw it with the umbilical tractor with the auto oh, steers, the first field we saw it in that video. So that was broadcast, and this is precision sown, and you can see it in the lines. Lovely crop of spring oats. A huge crop of a huge crop. Huge of crop of oats. Huge Jeez, that's a that. that's a serious. It's very very short. Um, the reason being, my agronomist, when it come to spraying time, there was a serious growth. Yeah. And he said we hit the oats a little bit harder with shortener, for fear of it becoming this height and lodging, and then being on the ground completely. And for some reason, the timing must have been absolutely spot on. Yeah because that never grew yeah. up. No, normally oats, like oats would be uh, be that, height. that height. There won't be a great crop of straw off it, Probably but- We lost a half the straw, but at least we get look, all the Look at all, like this, that's serious take. Yeah. That accord drilled on some job sowing that. It's so it's clean. all in the sowing, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> We're out here now with our field beans. So we also have to bring the banger with us to move up to a crop of spring barley the crows are at. There is a lot of, a lot of pods on them. Like you can see there, all the pods all the way up. We have a pod. So, probably pod. more pods than last year's crop now. Oh, I'd say so, a lot more. Didn't get any chemical fertilizer, did it? No. Just peak, no. just slurry. First year we grew them without any chemical fertilizer. Yep. Just slurry, a bit of chocolate spot coming on them, but. Yeah, it's just nothing you do with it now. And that's what that is them brown chocolate spot, so it's a fungus. Harvesting? Uh, about the first week in October. First week of October. So, here they are. So, um, yeah, that's the field beans. And the uncovered maize out here, so. We'll have a look at it and it's um, interesting. So, this is the uncovered maize, and as you can probably tell, it's definitely not as tall as the maize that was sown under plastic. We also had a bit of an issue. There's a reason why it is a bit thin in areas, but about a third of an acre inside the gate over there, we had to re -sow. The crows cleared the field in about two days. Two days, I've seen on a Friday and I went to spray it on Monday and they had it done, the harm done on the Monday. They literally went along and picked up every plant as they went along and well, just never, pulled it out never, and left it. Never left a plant. Yeah, like it, it was a holy terror to see. And then they done it across the field. Ah, so the field is, here, you know, months. the field, it had come up perfect. It was, it had come up very, very, very well. So on, everything was right, everything was right. We just went to spray it for the weeds. And the birds had the harm done. The maze at the minute here, in where the shelter is, beyond the dem trees up there, it's uh, shoulder the, high, is it? That is more. More? Six foot. Oh, out here in the middle of the field, this is how high it is. And then along that headland, it's a bit shorter. And where we had to re it, it's, it's a good bit shorter. How the crop is going to do? Well, there'll be a crop anyway. There'll be a crop, but it's not going to be as good as the covered uh, maize. You'd be surprised, the tassel will be nearly out when that head end of the week. Yeah. We, we started off, we did plant it a bit on the late yeah. side. It was put in maybe in less than ideal conditions. The birds 
just wrecked it all together. A shock and disappointment. There was a lovely establishment of plants well, and the birds head. just... That's a good healthy plant. So you were in a hall about two weeks ago with uh, spray on fertilizer. With, uh, Evergreen 1866. And uh, it's been sprayed twice with it. Yeah. And it's a great healthy, that's a great healthy looking leaf. Yeah. If we had been a bit earlier sown and the birds hadn't hit it, it probably would have done quite well, but it's just a little bit backward. Will we be harvesting both crops at the same time? No. 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 So we'll... Going into two separate pits. Two. There's a bit there, look. Yeah. You know. So there is a bit of a... There's not much of a difference between the varieties yet that we can uh, see anyways. Major, no. But the upper end of the field where they hit hardest was where the Saxon was sown. But yeah. A bit disappointing. Like they picked all the plants out of here too. But just wasn't enough to re-sow. But we re-sowed the bit up there. But... Yeah. Bit disappointing, but it's the hand you're dealt. So, we're just out here with the red clover. Show you the regrowth, and you can see yourself there. Massive amounts of red clover coming. So it's out competing the grass at the minute. Huge dents. Well. Doing fierce well. Put out um, about three loads of slurry across the whole thing, so I didn't get as much slurry as I was planning on. That's because we just at the time we didn't have a lot in the yard, so I stretched what we had across it. Uh, what is it now? Is it a month cut? Three no, weeks. three weeks cut. Three. So that's three. Three, three weeks more. That's, what that's, that's three weeks of a regrowth. So we're going to let this flower the next time before we cut it. And so we're, we're out here on the now farm looking at spring barley. So this is these are the fields we sowed with the pottinger drill. And it is some crop. Look at the head. So Seriously huge head. head of grain for spring barley. And look how thick it is, like just the level of thickness and like you can see when you get down, you can see the precision sewing of the pottinger drill in lovely neat rows, but just the level of thickness. Yeah, that's a serious crop of stuff. It's huge. I never seen, I never seen corn in the very bottom of these fields. Yeah. They're always wet or something was wrong with them, but no, it's done very well this year. Huge. There, there's two, this field last year, we worked with Nova Q and we didn't put fertilizer. We've done a few things, but it was a mediocre crop. Very mediocre. Yeah. But there was one thing, the crop of barley in both these fields here is just outstanding. It's, oh, it's outstanding. It, it must be the, the, some of the stuff we, we used last year only broke down what was in the soil yeah, for a so crop the, to use it this the, year. This is what I was getting at. So the, this is some of the best barley that we've probably ever grown. Oh, really, yeah. The heaviest and crops. There's two things that were done different. Last year, there was a bacteria spray put on this field and on that field out there that was to do with uh, helping the microbiome and the soil health and all that stuff. And that and the pottinger drill. There were the two things that were different about this, but it's just such a huge crop. A fantastic crop of barley. Just on the point of lodging in several spots, yeah. so you're on the limit. We have, there's a couple of spots there, and we, more than lodge. yeah, we have, we have to go and put some out in the big field, we have to put a few bird scarers, we'll show you what's down over there, and I'll pop the drone there before we go, but just a superb crop of spring barley, and that's what we're, that's the two things that's different, is them, back, that bacteria was put on it last year, I think it was folic acid or, or something like that, what was it? I just remember yeah. there was a couple of different things spread on this it was field. Put, put on, one field. Yeah, it was a bacteria was put on both fields. That and the pottinger drill with the precision so on, it is just like you can see oh, yourself. The, the drill done a lovely job. You can see just how thick it is. It was a, it was a super crop from the minute it picked yeah. up. It tailored exceptionally well. That's only got a bag of 18612 yeah. in the seed bed and one baggy can after it came up yeah that's all it's got and B6. It, got three, it got sprayed twice with um evergreen um 1866 with the trace elements it was also sprayed with magnesium uh, magnesium and it was also sprayed with potassium potassium yeah it got all its fungicides the day it wanted them. yeah which is rarely ever happens with us to get it done so well Huge crop, and when we get this cut, this farm is what we're going to be putting in with the soil enhancer with gold crop. I think there's, I was looking at, there's black oats, uh, oil, radishes, 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 mustard, uh, mustard uh, common vetch, and they say black oats. There, there's four or five buckwheat. Go, that'll be going into it over the winter to help fix nitrogen and do soil improvement. Yeah, that's that's what it's for. 
But um, yeah, just a, a superb crop of barley. So just had the drone up there and um, yeah, once you pop the drone, you see a bit more of the field than um, what you can see from the road. Yeah, nicely tossed them over. Yeah, it looks, with the way the sun is, it looks, there's casting big shadows and it looks like there's a lot of it gone down. But when we flew down close to it, it looks like it's more heavily tossed than actually lying on the ground. So provided it doesn't go any worse than that and we can keep the crows out of it, because the crows will dive bomb into it and flatten them areas. But if we can keep them out of it, it should be okay. But still has a while to go yet. Mm. So we just don't want to see any heavy rain now for the next three weeks or that. Um, and also, in the big field, you can see a stripe coming straight in from the gap across, like the width of a slurry tanker, mm. where there was an extra bit put on. And that's one of the downsides to growing a crop with slurry. With slurry, or just feeding it so well and getting such a good crop. So the better the crop, the harder it is to keep up. So, so we're out here on the bottom bit of barley in the same block of ground. A lot of wild oats in it. Yeah, a bit of wild oats in it. So this was sown a, a good, good bit later. A week, week, week or that. more was it? Week after that. Head isn't as long, but there's still good That's plump good. grain in it. Good, good, good well filled grain now. But um, yeah, it's just that crop. So now we are back at the table. The day got dark on us, so we missed out on visiting two crops, two blocks of land <coughs> with uh, spring barley and spring oaks on it. We had other errands to run, feed the bulls and check heifers and stuff, so it just got dark on Farm us. duty. Yeah. The two crops that we missed out on, one of them, uh, the spring barley is suffering a little bit from compaction. Yeah, a bit inside the gate. Yeah. But it's not bad though. It's, okay. it's, it's not it's bad, so but it's, it's, it's just, we mini tilled it two years in a row and... For doing him plow. Yeah. For us, with the heavier clay or the heavier ground, mini tilling two years in a row seems to have a big impact on the ground or the, the, well, the heavy, heavy clay. Yeah, right here. so it's just something to really tighten down on that we don't end up doing that. But it's just year kind of got late in us and we just needed to get it in. So it is what it is. And then the crop of oats is a great crop of oats. Great crop of oats, yeah. And so oats. it was the second place we went to with the umbilical system that we sold and. It's it's great crop of oats, super crop of oats. Yeah. But um, there, so there are the two crops we missed out on. So to finish off the video, just want to talk a bit about our fertilizer usage this year. As the catchy thumbnail says, we spread a third of the fertilizer we spread last year this year. How we done that is we put out a lot of organic manure. So we put out a lot of pig slurry, a lot of cattle slurry, a lot of dung. Made good use of the organic matter or organic fertilizer we had which then we were able to cut down the amount of artificial. So why do we go back to a bag of sown manure? Sold with a bag, sold with one bag and we top dressed when it was up with a bag. Yeah. So that was just 30 units. And that's all we put on. Normally we would sow, where we weren't spreading any dough or slurry, we could sow it up to four bags. Yeah. Oh, that'd be 18, 12. Right, 13, 6, 20 would be the normal. 13, plus, 6, 20. Plus sulfur would yeah. be a patch of juice. But this year it is a matter of what you could get at the best value. And yeah. 18612 was what I could get at the best, the best value, value. Uh, on the day. Um, then we'd normally top dress with maybe a bag and a half to two bags, or maybe uh, split it a bag and go twice yeah. with that. Just you are a urea can? But no, normally, normally with sulfur can hmm. is what we'd normally tap, top dress with. But um, this year, just with the fertilizer prices being the way they were, that wasn't going to be an, wasn't an option. Yeah. We probably spent the same amount of money on fertilizer. Yeah, but it, it, that, that, that's the, the truth. Yeah. It, the fertilizer prices went up so much that the same amount of money only bought you a third of the amount of fertilizer this year. Yeah, that when it got really dear, we yeah. were lucky enough. We, we, we bought it just before it, it peaked. We tapped into 18612 at around 720 and sure it ended up at 1000. Yeah, it ended up at 1000, yeah. 1100, I think. Nearly went to mm. 1100 at one stage. So it just, yeah, you just have to farm differently. Yeah. Hard on time. Yeah, that, that's the biggest end of it. The artificial fertilizer is very easy. It's a one man job. You peg it out, happy days. But when you go to dung, that's a two man job. That's getting the dung to the fields. Spreading it. Spreading it. The same again with the slurry. It's a lot more time consuming, but it, it seems to work. We've also used um, a lot more spray on fertilizers. Yeah. 
uh, especially the B E Evergreen. Yeah. So well, eighteen six six plus minerals. Yeah. Or the, the, the TE to, uh, trace TE. elements. Trace yeah. elements. It seems to work very very, very well. well. Yeah. We're buying off Nova Q, and we worked with them last year on a couple of different products. Mm. And that's that was one of the products we seen last year from putting well, we on the maze. Put on the maze, and the maze just literally jumped out of the ground within ten days. Yeah. So we, we tried so that cool. last year, and you were well happy with it. Yeah. So that's it's gone. It's gone and everything. It's actually. We should have left something that we didn't do with it mm. because we put it on everything you'd see would see, be something that didn't do it. Yeah, what what the difference is that got that wouldn't have got it, but we used well, we used with with better crops that said than most years. Yeah, we we used a lot of that this year and it seems yeah. to have worked very well. And going forward, this seems to be the way to go as it is. They want us to cut back on our artificial fertilizer usage. Yeah, and we seem to have done that, and still the crops are. They're not probably, suffering yeah, yet. Yeah, they're, they're no. not not suffering yet. No. But this is one of the the well, I would say arguments, but debates I've had with a couple of people over the last while is moving away from the artificial fertilizer. We, overall, we might have put out less nitrogen than we would have other years when you take into account dung and slurry, would we? Oh, we would have less, much, yeah, a lot less, a lot less. Yeah. So yeah, see, the, the dung is a completely different thing. It's it's a slow release, so it's late on in the crop when it yeah. gets it. The artificial stuff we used is to get it going. Yeah. It's quicker release, it, it gets it going quicker. Yeah. The dung takes over then. Yeah. Um because you're having a big pile of artificial stuff in it, it the dung has to do its job. Yeah. It has to stand on its own. Uh the spray on fertilizer is slow release as well. It carries it through. Mm. That's what it's for. Um it's just a matter to get the balance right. Yeah. But the the debate I've had with a few people is it's worked this year, crops are pretty good. But is this something that's going to work year on year? But th th this is the bit I've had with one person. He says, cutting back on fertilizer, even if we put them out down, he says it'll eventually run out the ground. I don't think it will. No, I don't think it will either. I, but you need, to be doing, back different. you need to be doing something when the crop is cut. Yeah. That's why we're doing this with gore crop going forward. With the cover it's crops. The cover crop, while the ground is ankle, it needs to be ticking over there, doing something, growing something that you can either put back into the clay yeah to keep every, to, to, to keep, keep the balance to keep to, to improve the soil health because a healthy soil is a productive soil and with the likes of some of the, the nitrogen fixing cover crops it'll be very interesting to see how they do for us when we get them sown and then ultimately run it through the system to see is there much of a benefit and then as well with the brassica mix how not even adding back the crop adding something back to the ground but just that getting the green manure into it and holding the nitrogen well, stuff, nitrogen leaching and that. It's, it's, it's just all going to be interesting to see. Even in the further, the further end of it, if it runs a batch of inlands for us, they're going to be naturally adding back to it. Adding back to it. So it's, it's just to get the balance. It's yeah. just to see what works. It's going to be interesting seeing going forward. But what do you think yourselves is what we're doing going to maintain and improve the soil or do you think it's going to run it down? But I'm I'm happy with how the crops have done for what's been put on them. It's um, I think it's quite cost effective. They've actually done too well. Yeah, well the the barley done too well as we've seen. It's it's um, it's looking a bit sorry for itself. Yeah, we it's still a small percentage just down. Yeah, we have five percent down. So it is it is that's the downside. If you do the job too well, crops are more likely to lodge. Well, it's, that's, that's it's like it's like what you said. Ever it's all a balance. It's a balance. But, but um, anyways, it's going to be interesting to see going forward. If you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, leave them in the comments down below. Anyways, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think we've covered everything. If there's anything we haven't, let us know. And anyways, that is it from us. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. That's it from us. Good luck. Yeah. How are you gonna eat your biscuit?